All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me today for our produce spotlight on beets. My name is Jenna Wood, and I am one of the dietitians here with the giant company. We're going to talk all about beets, and then we're going to make a super simple recipe that I guarantee you, you'll probably never buy it pre-made again, because I don't think I will. Maybe. All right. So some fun beet facts. Oh, yes. This photo is of a cherry. So our June's uh, picture is of cherries, but we're going to get some pictures of beets, right? So some facts to get us started with beets. My slide will work. So beets have been in our diets for a long, long time. Estimates are about 5,000 years. Some things say shorter, but thousands of years at least. Flash, you know, forward centuries, thousands of years. Very American food. Um, they grow here very well. And it is said that George Washington was really known for growing beets, experimenting with beets, and just really liked them. So I thought that was kind of a fun fact as we get closer to, you know, the 4th of July. They had a reputation of being an aphrodisiac, and Aphrodite herself was known to eat them, supposedly. <laughs> and the legend says that those who eat from the same beet will fall in love. I thought that was kind of cute. Of course, if you've ever used eaten beets, you probably are familiar with just how vibrant the color is. Um, you know, if you've ever gone to the bathroom after you've eaten beets, it can change the color of both your urine and, you know, your stool. So remember that when you go to the bathroom after consuming beets, that potent color, which we'll talk about. Uh, but because of that, it can be used as a dye for tons of different things, including a hair dye as early as the 1600s. They do have an earthy taste and smell. I get it. I happen to really love them, but I know it is controversial. Not everyone loves them. And that's okay. There's different foods. But this earthy taste and smell comes from a compound called ge geosamine. I looked up how to pronounce it, and there were a couple different versions. But geosamine is also the reason certain types of fish kind of have an earthy smell, kind of like carp and catfish. Also is responsible, apparently, for the way the earth, you know, smells after a good rain. So, you know, this compound is, you know, the smell factor and a lot of different things related to the earth. So it's a good thing. But if you don't like that, other colors of beets, you know, the more yellowy beets don't have quite as much of it in there. They are obviously the edible root. So, you know, when you're actually talking about the beet itself, you know, the red portion, that is really the beet root. So often, you know, outside of this country, typically you'll see it be called a beet root. But you can also eat the stems and the leaves. You can treat them just like any other leafy green. So, you know, sauteing, using them raw, putting them in smoothies. They are quite edible, have similar nutrients, and of course, a couple others like vitamin K. There are multiple varieties. Red being what we kind of think of most commonly, but there are yellow, which I really love too, white, and then a candy stripe. But, you know, if you look at the seed books, there are tons of other ones too. Red, of course, is the most likely to stain your counters, your clothes. So I'm wearing a very dark black uh, apron today because I'm wearing a shirt I like for some reason. And of course, you know, cutting boards and anything else. So trying to use cutting boards that are red or just, you know, ones you don't care about so much being stained. They're planted in early spring and there's typically like two rounds of growth. And of course, you know, summer, June being a good time to harvest. They're very resistant to insects, which is pretty good. Insects apparently don't like them either. Uh, and they can be high in oxalates. So for people who are at risk for kidney stones, might not be the safest vegetable for you to consume all of the time. Everybody else tends to be pretty darn safe to consume. And a lot of benefits, which we'll talk about. So in terms of beets and nutrition, you've probably heard they are a nutrition powerhouse. For a cup, very low calorie, about 75 calories, about four grams of fiber per serving. They're an excellent source of things like folate, vitamin A, vitamin K in the root, but also in the stems and leaves. They also have copper and potassium and all of these nutrients that we want to get more of. Now, the betalins or betalans, that is what's responsible for that red color that you're you know, familiar with. And of course, mostly in the red beets. It is a potent antioxidant. It has anti-inflammatory properties. And so this is something that is a little confusing when you read about beets online, but beets are a very good source of dietary nitrates. 
And often you hear about nitrates in a negative way when we talk about things like lunch meat, you may be told to watch out for nitrates. Chemically speaking, nitrates are the same. It's going to be the same exact compound that you'd find in, you know, the luncheon meats or in vegetables like beets. But when we consume them in something like a beet, so a vegetable, what we're thinking is they actually are converted differently. So the byproducts are different, which is why there's health benefits or, you know, sometimes health risks. In terms of beets, they are converted, so the nitrates found in beets are converted to nitric oxide, which has been shown to relax and dilate our blood vessels. And that's a good thing. It can help reduce blood pressure potentially. It can improve blood flow, brain function, and has been studied, especially like beet juice, uh, for enhancing athletic performance. So a lot of times runners and athletes will drink beet juice, maybe if they don't even like it, because of these potential benefits. You know, if you have high blood pressure, is this going to be the cure-all? Absolutely not. But it is a potential benefit for consuming beets. I just think they look so darn pretty too. I did want to throw this in here because this might not be something you've ever thought of or ever considered, but there is another plant called sugar beets. They're the same species, but a different variety, of course, than the beetroot we're consuming today. And they also are related to Swiss chard. So you think of that, you know, beautiful color of the stems in the Swiss chard. They grow to about a foot long, however, so much bigger than, you know, the beets that we consume as, you know, pickled beets and things like that. They're very big and they can weigh about two to five pounds. They're huge. They, so you may commonly, I looked at every sugar bag and sugar product in our store yesterday, and most of the sugar products, at least here on the East Coast and in our stores, you're going to find cane sugar. So sugar made from sugar cane. But sugar beets, which do grow in temperate climates, unlike sugar cane, and they can grow all over the Midwest, is made of about 18% sucrose. So it is very easy to make, you know, sugar, granulated sugar out of these sugar beets. Uh, of all of the production worldwide, about 35% of our sugar comes from beet sugar, so from these plants here, and of course, much more from sugar cane. However, in the United States, over 55% of our sugar is derived from these beets. There's a couple different brands that are predominantly just sugar beets. We don't carry any, I don't think, but they it's the same thing. So if you get sugar from sugar cane or sugar beets, the end product is going to look exactly the same because we've distilled it into sucrose. I just thought that was kind of cool. Fun fact. For beets, again, not everyone loves them, but there are so many different uses and ways to pair it that can kind of mellow the, you know, earthy flavor. So of course, in terms of pairings, you can pair it with other root vegetables, especially when you're going to roast it. Probably more common in, you know, the fall and the winter, but pairing it with things like carrots, onions, radishes, like actual whole radishes, or horseradish, which I love. Similar earthy profiles, which is why they pair so nicely. Tons of different spices, some of which we'll use today, um, but you could use allspice, cumin, cinnamon, pepper, paprika, caraway, but really, I mean, we're using mustard today, so lots of different spices. Tons of different herbs pair nicely. You could see in the picture, I believe this would be thyme. Uh, dill, parsley, tarragon, mint, basil, cilantro, lots of herbs go with uh, beets depending on what you're making. Fruits and vegetables, apples, especially in the fall, pair really nicely with beets. Oranges, any citrus, because citrus, whether it's from, or like an acid from something like citrus or vinegars, really can kind of help lessen that earthy taste. So that's why citrus, like oranges, nice pairing. Potatoes and beets, perfect combination. And pomegranates are also very good with beets. And if you're already, you know, risking the whole red dye from the beets, you might as well have pomegranate, right? In terms of protein, so hard boiled eggs, obvious combination with beets. I will talk about how to use hard boiled eats, beets, mm, hard boiled eggs with the beets we're making today. And then pork, beef, duck, fish, lots of different types of fish. I do have a recipe for salmon with beets, but white fishes are perfectly fine with beets as well. In terms of dairy, lots of dairy pairs well. Butter, different types of cream and yogurt, kefir, sour cream, 
Goat cheese is probably what people think of most often. And then creme fraiche. But there are others, ricotta pears well too. And then there are, you know, again, vinegars pair nicely, pine nuts, as you see in this picture, chickpeas and other beans. So, so perfect. Uh, I do see lots of questions, so I will get back to that. Uh, and then popular uses. So you may see it on a salad with a salad, on salad bars often, typically pickled, pasta dishes, in different types of sauces, in baked goods. Lots of baked goods will use it. So as a natural coloring, depending on how much you use, it can lead to that flavor. But I have seen it frequently with things like um, red velvet cake, because red velvet cake will have that acid that might neutralize some of that flavor of the beet and have that nice, you know, beet red color instead of food dye. Now, of course, roasted, which we'll talk about, borscht, so that kind of like beet soup, which can be served cold with, you know, the sour cream on top. I've made that before. It is so, so good if you've never tried it. Hummus, juices and smoothies, which if you saw, I think it was a video on our social page a couple of days ago or a week ago, I made a smoothie juice out of beets and then dried or pickled, which we'll make today. Let me do check. So someone said they bought pickled beets this week. I'm telling you, I hope you tried this recipe. It was easy. So good. I just ate one. Are beets bad for the kidneys? No, absolutely not. Not bad for kidneys. If you have kidney disease or kidney stones, it could be something to watch out for because of the oxalate content. But oxalates aren't necessarily harmful to people who don't form those types of stones. So definitely not bad. And if anything, in terms of beets being good for lowering blood pressure, that could potentially be a benefit to kidneys that aren't already, you know, have kidney disease. Um, let's see. After years of stains and prep, we moved out and started purchasing pre-cooked beets in the produce section. I bought one too. Absolutely not. Doesn't sacrifice nutrition. A little bit more money, but a ton of convenience. But I will show you, I used these um, last night to kind of see what they looked like when you pickle them. Fresh beets. They can be pricey. Yes, I have rubber gloves we're going to use today. <laughs> Let's see. Tomato-free tomato sauce, and it contains one roasted beet to make it red. I love that idea. Oh, and that salad sounds so good. Greek dressing. Perfect. So that often has some feta, the vinegar. Perfect combinations there. Lots of different beet products in the store, in our Giant and Martin stores, depending, you know, variety can change. But we have I personally did not love these, even though I love beets, but we do have freeze-dried beets. They're just a little different. But we do have these Love Beets brand. You'll see them. We have cooked beets, so just like a steamed or roasted, I think they're steamed, uh, ready-to-eat beets. They come in like a vacuum seal pack. These are just like plain, but then we'll also have ones that are sliced and pickled too. So that, those are nice too. Then we have uh, sauerkraut, which is made with red cabbage, beets, and carrots. This one's very good, but I bet we can make it. These diced pickled beets, I'm not gonna lie, these are pretty fun. I have bought these before. They're um, in like a little like fruit cup uh, and they are pickled beets, perfectly little diced cubes. The amount of sugar is pretty high. However, I would venture to guess the sugar and the salt content on the nutrition label is including the liquid. So if you're not, Drinking the liquid, you probably aren't getting all of the sugar and salt. Beet juice, again, popular among athletes and runners. Tons of different canned varieties. And you can use an uh, like a no salt added like we have here to make this pickled recipe. If you want to save yourself the time of buying the fresh ones, it is still, you know, you are still pickling it yourself. These are just, you know, steamed and then canned. Hummus. Um, I have the Ithaca brand here, so beet hummus, but we also have a recipe for beet hummus on our website on savory, which I linked. Noodles, there's also um, this one here. So if you want to avoid the canned, we do have a glass jar and then you could just pour out that liquid and then pour the liquid we're going to make on top of the beets. Super easy. Then you already have the jar. And then of course the fresh beets, which I used today. Most of, most or all of the beets I saw in our store have three beets on them, just so you know. They were huge yesterday at my store. So our recipe today, beet hummus, very good. I recommend trying it. So today's recipe, we are making refrigerator pickled beets. Of course, you know, traditionally you could can them, that whole process. These are a quick pickle and they're so good. I'm so excited for you to try them. 
to preface, you do want to use roasted or cooked beets of some sort. You don't want them to be raw for this version. You may be able to pickle raw ones. I haven't tried it. I think the texture would be a little different. You could, of course, eat raw beets. I love raw beets. The, the pickled version should be cooked. You can roast. You can boil. You can steam. You can cook in the Instant Pot. I don't always recommend boiling vegetables because you will lose a lot of those water-soluble vitamins in the process, especially something like beets that have to be cooked for a long time to be soft. So that's just something to consider. And then you're going to be, you'll have a big pot of just red water. So just something to consider. The roasting also brings out a nice natural sweetness in the beets. And that is what I did with mine. And I will show you, I'll turn on my other camera, but I roasted them last night. So, so easy. You just want to give them a good scrub, rinse, get off any dirt, um, chop off little tail end, and as much of the stems as you would like. Then you're going to cook them in a 400 degree oven um, on a sheet of foil, and then you individually wrap each beet in foil. And they kind of steam in their own little foil packet. Um, you want to roast them until they are, you can like put a knife or a fork or skewer right through the center without really any problem. Um, what I like about this variety or this version of cooking compared to like the Instant Pot, which I think is also a fantastic way of cooking it, it's just for roasting, you may have, and I did yesterday when I bought them, you know, the packet of beets, one was a little bit smaller, one was really big, and you're able to kind of take the beets out of the oven as they finish so they don't burn. In the Instant Pot, you want to have, you know, the same size roughly, or some are going to be overcooked, some might be undercooked. So. Just keeping that in mind. With the roasting, let it cool for about 10, 15 minutes, and then you can literally peel off the skin. It's so easy. The skin's edible, but not always the nicest thing to chew on when you're pickling. But just easy way to cook your beets. And I'm telling you, I like put them in the oven, kind of forgot about them until they were finished, and then I just peeled them off. And they were ready to use, and they looked so beautiful. In terms of our pickled beets, very simple ingredients too. We need the roasted beets that have been cooled and sliced. So I'll slice mine uh, right now. We need cider vinegar. So I think the only cider vinegar we carry in the store is apple cider vinegar, but there are other you know cider vinegars that could be made from other things. But I used apple cider. It worked great. You could use white vinegar. You could probably use any vinegar. Red wine might be a little strange, but apple cider is pretty easy to come by. Water, a little bit of sugar. So it is a third of a cup of granulated sugar. I wouldn't really stray from that amount. You're not, unless you're drinking the liquid, you're not going to be drinking that whole third of a cup of sugar. And it really is needed to kind of balance the flavors of the beets. One teaspoon of kosher salt. It is recommended to use kosher because the granules are a little bit bigger. You could, of course, use regular salt. And I would just use a little bit less, maybe half the amount. Then we're going to use a quarter teaspoon of dry ground mustard. This is optional. You could also use mustard seeds. Totally up to you. There's tons of different um, varieties on her website. So this is from bellyfull.net. And she, you know, said people put garlic in there. So people put uh, cinnamon sticks. You can do, you can do onion. Pickled onions with beets would be fantastic. So you can do onions too, whatever you want. Then you're going to do some whole black peppercorns too into the bottom. We are going to get started, but these are just how you do it. So we're just going to boil everything together except for the um, the peppercorns. That's going to go at the bottom of the jar. Otherwise, we're going to bring that all to a boil, and then we are going to cover and refrigerate. Very, very simple. We do have some recipes on our savory website. I will also share. So the beet hummus, spaghetti with sautéed beets and beef. I think I'm going to try that one because that sounds really good. And then the slow roasted beets with that salmon. Mm, looks so good too. These are all savory recipes. We have a ton more too. So my stop sharing. Yay. Yes. Okay. So let me, I'm going to pull up the recipe so I can see it really quick. And then I'm going to turn on my other camera so you can see. Okay. I'm going to spotlight. Okay. So I don't know. Let me turn on this light. I don't know if you can see just how, how beautiful they look, but they are just so, so nice. So I am going to, in our pot, we are gonna do the one cup of water, 
which I have already measured here. I'm going to turn our burner. Okay, burner's on, water is in. Then we're going to do a cup of the cider vinegar. Oh, that's so funny. Someone said that for the longest time they thought beets were just very sweet because they had only had them pickled. I love pickled beets. I love regular beets, but yes, totally different taste. Oh, isn't it? Yes, my pot. So it is, um, oh gosh, what is her name? The um, Pioneer Woman brand. It's, it's shaped like a flower. So cute. Okay, so one cup of the cider vinegar. Wow. It's like exactly what I had left in it. Fantastic. Cup right into there. Then we are going to do a third of a cup of just granulated sugar. Of course, this is cane sugar. It'd be kind of funny to use beet sugar, kind of full circle. But I need the third of a cup. And we're pretty much just going to bring this to a boil until the sugar is kind of mixed. Ray Drummond, yes, the pioneer one, yes. Um, I love the pot. It was on sale where I bought it, so I thought it was so cute. And I know, I think Shana really likes the pioneer one. Okay, so cup, third of a cup of sugar, right into there. Then we need a teaspoon of that kosher salt. So we just have it kind of in a little container like this. Again, kosher salt, so I'll try to show you. The granules are much bigger. So if you were to just use regular table salt, you'd probably wanna cut it in half because of the size difference. So kind of see right in there. And then we will do the ground mustard. So we have two brands. I didn't see a giant brand, um, but we do have this um, Watkins ground mustard, and we also have a McCormick. They were the same price, so I went with this bigger one. At least I think it was bigger. So quarter teaspoon right in there. Again, it's optional. You could do other things, but I tried these last night, or I tried these this morning, and they're pretty good. So I'm going to keep with the same uh, recipe there. I am going to give it a little stir. Oh, you could see a little bit of red from the spoon. Okay, so we're just going to let that come to a boil. Okay, I'm going to flip the camera around because we are going to prep the beets for the container. So I do just have a big old wide mouth mason jar with the lid. Um, you could use other containers, but this is a really nice one. We do recommend a wide mouth because some of the beets, it might be that size. Into here. So I found, we just have our black pepper grinder and I, you can open it, calls for about five peppercorns in there. I ended up doing a little bit more last night. So I'm going to do a little bit more, but you can do as much or as little as you want, but five, give or take, seems to be good. So they're right in the bottom. Then, so I am going to put on some gloves, just any, you know, kitchen gloves you have. We sell a bunch at the store, but you just really don't want to stain your hands, right? Because everything is going to get stained. You can already see the stain and I'm using your red cutting board. You can still see it. There we go. So I have my beets that I roasted last night. I will kind of show you, oh, they're cold. They're just so beautiful. It really was not all that difficult to roast them. So I probably will continue doing that. Oh, this is definitely going to stain my knife. But I'm just going to slice them. I do recommend, so they're going to be soft. So I kind of just put a fork into the top and kind of just cut into whatever shape or thickness you would like. Since they are quick pickle, you might not want to slice them too thick, but or you'll just have to let them sit longer. Oh, and it just cuts so easily right down. <laughs> Smells so good. Okay. And then we're just going to layer them in the jar. The vinegar, water, you know, pickling mixture is already coming to a boil. So that was pretty quick. 
So I'm just going to stick them right in there and lay them flat. All the way in there. I'm going to let the mixture, you know, boil for a little bit. Make sure everything's all mixed together. I'm just going to keep cutting my beets. Now, I did make some with the fresh beets that are already roasted, the um, Love Beets brand. I didn't actually try one this morning, so I will have to try one and let you know how they turned out, but I'm sure they will be delicious. Okay, layer them in there. I think I'm going to do, you definitely want to put a fork or something in here to kind of stabilize it while you're cutting. They will roll around. And you can do whatever shape you want, dice them, but I think the nice big slices look so beautiful. Perfect. So then I'm gonna take off, I have two more beads, but for the essence of time, I'm going to move them over. And as you can see here, it is rapidly boiling. So that is more than enough time boiling. So I'm gonna turn it off and you wanna remove it from the heat. I'm just gonna move it to a different boiler. You want it to cool a little. We're not gonna wait too long because it's already you know, almost a half hour. Then all you're really gonna do, we're gonna let it cool. You're going to pour the liquid over top of the sliced beets in the jar until it covers them. So the amount of liquid that's in there really is quite perfect for like a quart wide mouth mason jar. Perfect. Uh, I'm just going to move it over. I'll do that after we hang up today, but I do want to show you, I made one last night, you know, TV time. So I did make, whew, did make one. <laughs> I did make one last night. They smell so good. And they already smell like these perfect, you know, pickled beets. And I did use some of these and some of the roasted ones. I made six or seven. So made plenty of them to do that. So I did, I kind of sliced them. They look you know, similar, but that was my pickled beet. It looks so, so perfect. And they were so delicious. But let me take, if I can find it. I did also, so this is the pickled beet um, from the Love Beets. I won't lie, they're not as beautiful. They taste just as good, but they're not as pretty as the homemade roasted ones. So I am happy I roasted some myself. They taste, they taste good. They do, but the homemade roasted one, you gotta try it. If you're gonna try the whole thing, you might as well roast them. That was a very easy process. They're so good. So they recommend, so once you pour the vinegar mixture over the beets, let it cool down completely, you know, put the lid on and it recommends leaving it on the counter for up to 24 hours. And then you stick it in the fridge. I just, I couldn't do that. I put them in the fridge. Like they probably sat on the counter for like two, three hours. And then I put them in the fridge and then I took them out this morning, but so, so good. I'm sure the longer you let them sit, the better it's going to taste. They recommend I think she said about six weeks in the pickled mixture, the roasted about a week um, by themselves. You can, so let's say you eat all these fantastically delicious beets in tons of different ways on salads, on sandwiches. Um, however, I like to eat them by themselves. You have the liquid left over. Let's say you want to use it to marinate some pickled hard boiled eggs. The recommendation food safety wise is to take this leftover liquid put it in a saucepan, bring it to a boil, and then do the same exact thing we just did. Let it cool, pour it over the peeled hard boiled eggs that are in the jar, except I would not leave it on the counter. I would stick it right back in the fridge. So that's just the recommendation. If you're gonna reuse the liquid, you do wanna boil it just in case anything grew in there. You know, you wanna boil it. But that is all I have today for our pickled beets. I hope you learned something about beets and maybe you'll try pickling them next time.